So as this tournament's been going on, we've been playing in one big match after another, bigger and bigger as it goes on until now, this World Cup semifinal versus, well, it doesn't really get much bigger than this, England is going to be our opponents, and yes, they've trounced us twice before in the Nations League matches. Will we be facing that same England team, or will we be third time lucky this time around to see ourselves through to a World Cup final? What's up, peoples? It's Gendo here, and welcome back to the International Boys, where, as always, if you are still enjoying the series, please do go and drop it a like. And today, it's the FIFA World Cup semifinals, where we're going to be taking on England in the venerable, the decorated Rose Bowl out in Pasadena, California. But before we get to that, since we've made it this far, I feel like we should go and take a look at the rosters of the other three semifinal teams and see who is exactly on there, see how many real-life players are still on the national teams, and see how far they've gotten 10 years into the game. Right, so just as a confirmation of who is in the semifinals, aside from us in England, Brazil is gonna be taking on Netherlands as the Netherlands were able to get past Portugal in their quarterfinal matchup. So let's take a look and see how the Flying Dutchman have gotten on over the last 10 years and see who they brought to the World Cup. And just as a little side note, basically anybody 26 and under is pretty much gonna be a region at this point in time. So I'm not gonna look into them unless they are one of the highest valued players on that roster. Uh, first and foremost, just going by age, Stefan de Vrij is the oldest player on this roster at 34 years old, playing for Milan, and yeah, at 34 years old, I was expecting his speed to go away, but defensively still looks pretty solid. Uh, Wesley Holt, Ricardo Kishna, and Ricardo Kishna is apparently out of a contract at 31 years old. Still looks fairly decent, but where did he lose out on his contract? He was at Real Madrid for the last five years, and I guess they thought that, hey, we can always replace him. So they just dumped him out, and Ricardo Kishna is no longer playing. Rochelle de Bazur, the Baz. I know of him, and in fact, I've seen Dr. Benji use him before, and I want to say it wasn't the Parma series. Was it the Parma series? I, th ew. It was either Parma or Salford, and then I think second yellow card used Bazaar before. I don't quite remember. But yeah, he does turn into a half-decent central mid, and as you can see, still playing, still with the national team. Steven Bergwin's on there. Timothy Fosu-Mensa uh, is on the national team, and I would have to ask why. With stats like that, it doesn't look too terribly good, so I don't know why that uh, Netherlands would call him up into the national side, but, you know, whatever. I guess they need to fill out depth. Baz de Bruin, we saw him in Manchester United when I did my Champions League finals, so yes, I would have expected that. And then a lot of regens down here. Everett Wynn. Everett Wynn is apparently their highest valued player out of all the regens. And 24 years old, yeah, I can see why. Looks fairly solid. 13 goals and 28 caps for the Netherlands side. Currently playing for Bayern. Now, the Netherlands, along with Brazil, have actually won a couple of major competitions within these last 10 years. Their most notable one being the 2020 Euros, coming away with a very strong side, a very strong win, and almost did it again four years later in 2024, only coming in runners-up. But that's nothing to scoff at, really. And then they also came away as Confed Cup winners in 2021. So within those last four years, the last six years, really, Netherlands have put together a very strong squad. Will it eventually we lead them to World Cup victory? We don't know. So that's Netherlands at a glance. Let's take a look now at Brazil. And really, you'd have to think that Neymar is still playing, right? And in fact, he is. At 34 years old, He, him and Felipe Coutinho are still playing for the Brazilian side. And now, once again, the speed and the physicality leaving these players at this uh, this age, this tender age of 34 years old, but technically still gifted, attacking-wise, still pretty solid. So he does still have something to offer for the Brazilian side, 148 caps and 77 goals. That's a lot. That's a lot for both of them, and he's still playing for Barcelona. So there you go. Um, uh, Philippe Coutinho now, 34 years old once again. His physicals haven't left him, so it's amazing that he still kept himself up. He's now playing for Manchester City, uh, 73 caps to his name. And when did he leave Liverpool? He actually left Liverpool the second season in and has played at Manchester City ever since. So Liverpool fans, I'm sorry, but if Football Manager is any indication that Coutinho is leaving, 
It might not be to Man City, but he's probably going to be leaving soon. Ederson, goalkeeper, playing for Real Madrid. Marquinhos, is he still pretty solid? At 32 years old, still looks like a very strong sender back. So can't fault him for that. 104 caps for him. Gabigol, Gabriel Barbosa, 29 years old. Has not really shown as far as a striker, at least an attacking player for Brazil. Only 14 goals in 41 appearances. Still looks like a pretty solid player. Just looking at who the highest value regens are, and I just take a look at Gilson at 97 million euros. And yeah, he's worth every single penny if you take a look at his stats. That is ungodly for a regen. Just look at some of those stats. A lot of 20s, especially on the physical side. Nothing lower than a 15, well, except for jumping reach, but 17 acceleration, 17 pace, 17 stamina. That is just amazing physically. And then everywhere else, this is almost the perfect regen right here. And it just happens to be someone who plays for PSG and someone who plays for Brazil. And along with the Netherlands, Brazil is the other team that has actually won something that has made it to the semifinal here within the last 10 years. Most notably, the 2018 World Cup much better than what Netherlands did. And then they also won the Copa America in 2019. They themselves did not win a Confed Cup or an Olympic Games, but when you're talking about nations and you're judging on the success of the nation, it's always the World Cup first, continental competition second. So with that being the case, Brazil seems to have found a little bit of success over these last 10 years. Will they win the World Cup this year? Remains to be seen. Right, so that's Brazil done and dusted. Now let's take a look and see our opponents. What are our opponents going to be putting forth against us on this day? And as you can clearly see, the oldest player on the squad right now, Jack Butlin, the goalkeeper, who currently plays for Spurs. And actually, Spurs do have a lot of talented players on their roster at this point in time of the game. I don't know if that's a glitch or anything, but it's just something that needs to be noted. Jack Butland is uh, playing there now. Harry Kane still there at 32 years old, losing a little bit of speed, but still has a decent amount of caps and goals to his name. John Stones is there. Raheem Sterling, Calum Chambers, Deli Alley, Lewis Cook. And then we start to get to players that obviously aren't really known. There are probably a lot of regens in there, but Bed Woodburn, definitely not a regen. Currently playing for Arsenal, the 26-year-old is, and surprisingly, doesn't have a lot of goals to his name. I guess they do, in fact, play him out on the wings in the national side, as he's got 58 caps and only 12 goals. He does seem to like to score against us, though. I think he's got three of his goals uh, coming against us, so we do still need to watch out for him, whether it's up top or out on the wings, uh, or actually, probably don't need to worry about him because, uh, as a as a striker because you got Peter Blackwell. Peter Blackwell is still the main threat on the English side. He plays for Spurs as well. The 25-year-old has got himself a goal every other game, uh, 21 goals and 42 caps internationally, and just a lot of decent stats when you're talking about a striker, a prime striker, 19 finishing, 15 composure. Right, so let's just dive into this England match, and I'm going to be using the 4-3-3 V formation with a couple of changes due to extreme fatigue. But Stefan Milovac is going to stay out there in between the sticks. The back line will be Gajic, Stojanovic, Babic, and Staniev. Uh, Jovanovic is going to be sitting out for this one. Uh, Sretin Vietrovic is not tired, but he has been suspended for this match, so Peter Mitrovic is going to be taken over in his place at defensive mid. The two center mids today will be Nenad Boznach and Sergei. Out on the wings, we got Sergin Plavsic and Sasha Ostojic, like I said, due to severe fatigue. Uh, Philip Kostic and Andrei Zivkovic cannot make it today. And then sitting up front, he may have severe fatigue as well, but he needs to be out there to score goals. It's Luka Jovic, but believe me, Luka Belic might be coming on at halftime. And believe me when I say that this situation is far far from ideal due to the fatigue that happened uh, from Germany just three short days ago and now coming in against England who are pretty much well rested and seem to be hungry to get themselves to an, a World Cup final that they haven't been to in quite some time so we might be very well up against it here but we can always go out there and try that's all we really can do is go out there and give it the old college try so let's go kick off see what happens. And as I said versus Germany, I'm very glad for the boys. I'm very happy for the boys for making it this far because this is a lot farther than I would have expected in this, com in this competition. We're playing with house money, essentially. So even if we lose, it doesn't feel that bad because of how far we've progressed. As I'm talking, not a lot has happened as we're just about to come up to the 28-29 minute mark. England has had a lot of shots, but nothing has really come of it. Serbia 
Sto uh, Stoyich taking a shot. It's cleared out for a corner kick. This is the first highlight of the match, 28 minutes in. I know. Probably should have been a lot more highlights, especially with how England have been uh, dominating on the shots, at least. We've had a lot of possession, but uh, just nothing to show for it. It is nice to see, though, that we are neutralizing England's possession, that we are holding on to the ball more than they have but it's just that we have not been able to do much of anything with it shots-wise. As you see, we have only had two shots. England with five, three of them on target already. And as we're coming up to halftime, there hasn't been much of anything. Still, it's still going and there hasn't been a single highlight a bar from the one. So what that's telling me is that the defense is holding England down, but it's not really doing much to get the ball up to the playmakers on the wings and then in the middle to Luka Jovic. So as I said, first casualty is in fact going to be Luka Jovic because of how tired he is. He was tired going into it. So we're going to sub on Luka Belic, who's got an 83, no, not 83, a 93 in terms of fitness. And then let's just take a look and see what we could do to try and make this a little bit more easy on us. And I'm going to take off play out of defense, put it on mixed passing, and that should do it. Uh, let's do a team talk first. All we need is one goal. Right now, we are holding England up, which is good. Now we just need to do the business on the other end and score a goal. And uh, Peter Mitrovic also wasn't looking the best out there when he started this match. I believe he only had an 80% fitness, so I need to watch out for him if I need to you know, make a substitute in that defensive mid-roll, which might be coming sooner rather than later. Is England coming forward not even five minutes into this half? What even was that? But Blackwell, I have no idea what Blackwell was doing. Good save for Milovac, and it's going to be a corner kick for England. They whip it inside. It falls out to Ben Woodburn. I don't know if he's going to take a crack from the top. Harry Kane out to Deli Alley. Has to play it back to Bruce. And uh, yeah, England. Oh man, England just all over us right now. I went ahead and made that sub. Peter Mitrovic is now out. Marco Gruich is coming in. Surprising me that Marco Gruich can actually play as a defensive mid. But uh, yeah, it said he could play as a deep line playmaker. So let's see what he can do as a deep line playmaker. Well, it doesn't really do much. Oh, Raheem Sterling. What's even going on there? The ball actually stayed in bounds. Even Sasha Milic didn't... Or Sasha Milic. Wow. Even Milovac didn't even know what was going on. Good save from the lad. But in the end... It's still England's ball, and England's still coming forward with it. Harry Kane right inside to Raheem Sterling, and was he offside, ref? No, Raheem Sterling punches it through with 18 minutes left to go in this match. There's finally a break in the deadlock, and it happens to go England's way. I thought this would have happened a lot earlier in the match, not going to lie. It was a decent dispossess, but Kane was right there to find Sterling. The loose ball found Sterling, and Sterling finds the net. Bummer, boys. All right, I guess it's all or nothing right now. I honestly think it is all or nothing, and we need to we need to throw something in here. We need to throw in a little bit of a playmaker. So we're going to throw in Radovan Stankovic in the hopes that he can use his playmaker role to help push the ball up to Luka Belic. I mean, we got 18 minutes left at this point in time. We got nothing to lose here. We might as well try and go for it, try and take it to England within these last 15 minutes. Seven minutes to go now. England with an interception. Now they're taking it forward. Harry Kane up to Ben Woodburn. Back inside to Raheem Sterling. Taking a shot. What a save off the line from Milovac. Great, but he spilled it. And it's cleared away. Clearing the danger. Oh, come on, boys. Gotta hold on to the ball. Gotta hold on to possession. Time is winding down. Two minutes left on the clock. Ostoyich with a corner kick inside. Oh, he just missed it. Just on the outside of the post as the flares are going off. The Serbs are trying to will their team into a World Cup final, but it's just not going to happen as the time is just about to tick out. England are going through to the World Cup final. Bummer, boys. It's uh, I, I'm I want to be happy with how this team has gotten this far. But at the same time, losing 1-0 to a team that was so much better than us is in talent, only losing 1-0 feels like we could have at least nipped it. Once again, with like with Germany, nipping them and getting a draw out of it to at least push it into extra time. But boys, we're just going to say it's unlucky. At the end of the day, England were the better side. We were unlucky to at least try and not this match up. Ugh. Damn, that's a big disappointment. But at the end of the day, a little bit of upside. 
we're going to have ourselves one more match here to show the third place match and see if we can actually come to third place. It would be the highest Serbia finish ever at this point in time. So why not just go and do it? So we don't know who we're going to be playing next. Uh, we'll be coming back with the lineups in just a second. And at that time, you'll find out who's be playing against us and also in the World Cup final. Right, so I found the one screen that didn't actually show who we were facing up here in the top. But make your guesses who we're going to be actually facing. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, I wouldn't have picked that we would be facing off against Brazil either, which means that England are going to be taking on Netherlands in the World Cup final. And don't worry, we will show who wins that at the end of this match, at the end of the episode. So don't worry about that. But yeah, us versus Brazil, I never would have thought it. I, I thought Brazil would have gotten past the Netherlands, but here we are. And this is how we're going to be facing off against them. They're going to be using a 4 2 3 1. We're going to be using a 4 2 3 1 because it seems that they're weak against it. I don't know. Just at this point in time, I just want to throw something out there and see what happens. So that's what we're doing here. Milovic is going to be in between the sticks. We got Mihailovic, Jovanovic, Babic, and Staniev along the back line. Our two center mids will be Bozinec and Sergei. Peter Mitrovic is a bit tired, so we'll give him a little bit of rest and maybe take him come him off the bench. That's what we'll do. But anyway, the attacking mids will be Zivkovic, Stankovic, Kostic, Luka Jovic sitting up top. He might come off at halftime as well. Who knows at this point in time. It's the third place match. Not a lot of people put a lot of stake into this third place match. But hey, for Serbia, if the difference between fourth and third, hey, it just means it's the difference of fourth place is our best finish ever or third place is our best finish ever. At, at, at any rate, it's we're already gone as far as we possibly could. The best that we possibly could be getting with this national team. So at this point in time... Any results, I welcome. And we ourselves did not have to leave California for this match. In fact, we didn't even have to leave the stadium because this third place match also being taken place in the Rose Bowl. So the nice summertime California sunshine bathing down upon everybody. Everyone's having a good time. And let's just see if we can come away with a win. Nine and a half minutes on the ball being thrown forward. Goran Staniev, I, I still don't understand why he was trying to make that real dumb long throw that just went to nobody and went to a Brazilian player on top of that. As once again, as we saw versus Germany, a horrible throw in leads to a counterattack by the opponents and they get a goal out of it. As you see here, Jorge Luis scoring for Brazil. Gabriel, is that Gabigol? Was that Gabriel Barbosa? Yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point in time. There's a wonderful strike from Luis out of the reach of Milovac, and Brazil have themselves a 1 0 lead. 20 minutes in now, and ball coming forward by Brazil once again. It's a couple of horrible tackles, but fortunately, Fassbinder fails on the shot, and Milovac there to just scoop it up. And once again, we've had all the possession at this point in time 57%, but. Uh, all the shots really are not dropping for us. We're taking too many shots and just not putting them on net. And that is a bit of a problem. At this point in time, it's right before halftime, so this is not going to matter. But yeah, like I said, we come up to halftime. We have had all the possession. We've had all the shots, but we're just not clinical with our finishing. And that could once again come down to fatigue. It also could come down to how well Brazil do defensively. And we need to continuously try to break them down. So instead of going attack, we'll try and counterattack them. And uh, maybe in the second half, we will be able to sneak a goal past them and equalize this match. Or maybe even come away with a win. Still 45 minutes left to play. Bozinac takes it down a long ball forward. Tried to find Zivkovic out there on the wing. But in the end, nothing really comes of it. And now here come Brazil. Gabriel Barbosa gets it through to Gilson. To Fassbender taking a shot. And ooh, defense, 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 defense. All over the place. Not marking Fassbender. And the ball goes past Milovac as he reacts way too late. It's Brazil 2. It's Serbia nil. And yeah, look at that. Defense just nowhere near. That's a lovely bit of a rocket shot from Fassbinder. And it's just been a whole lot of nothing this entire second half as we got 10 minutes left to go. I made all three of my subs. We've still had all the possession, but just haven't turned that possession into shots on target as that's what's killed us this entire match. When you take a look at the whole thing, Serbia only having 14 shots on targets. More than Brazil, though, but it's only the four that were on targets that really were the downer on the day as we weren't able to make those chances count with all that possession that we had uh, to put the ball on net. As the final score is, we lose to Brazil 2-0, and we end up being fourth place in the World Cup. Hey, not bad for thinking that we would have gotten out in the quarterfinals. Now, don't you think... 
I can't really get mad at this entire thing. We gave ourselves a great ride. We we went on a great run through this World Cup. And now, I guess it's just build upon it. Either with Serbia or go somewhere else. And at this point in time, because of what I've done here at Serbia, I don't know if I want to go anywhere else. That's the thing. Yes, I see a lot of national team jobs open up. France, Germany, Italy, Portugal, Spain that are all insecure. And I would love to pick up one of those five, especially Spain. You know, like I said, the main goal was to take over the Spanish national team. But yeah, if no jobs that are better than Serbia open up, I might as well just stay with them because look at the players that they have and look at how young they are. They're only going to get better. So I might as well just continue on with this team and see if I can get them through back into the Nations League Group A or Division A at this point, see how far we get in the Euros in 2028, and see if we can get ourselves back to the World Cup in 2030. Like I said, if the job doesn't actually open up of like France, Germany, Spain, if none of those jobs open up, then I won't bother. We'll just stay with Serbia. All right, enough of the rambling. Let's just get right into this match. England versus Netherlands. I'm not watching this entire thing. What do you got? Who is the ultimate champ? The World Cup champs of 2026. It is, in fact, England winning by the score of 2-0. Raheem Sterling getting a goal in the 38th minute. And Brian Bosman, own goal in the 44th. We might as well take a look at the Sterling goal since he did also score against us. So let's take a look at this. Carter to Lewis Cook. Slips it through to Blackwell to Woodburn. A lovely little bit. Ooh, Sterling had a little help from the goalkeeper. But it went into the back of the net. And I guess Bosman... Uh, the goalkeeper for the Netherlands, potting one in his own net, giving England the 2-0 win. So there you go, all my English fans. I know you were probably split between me trying uh, to get myself to a World Cup final, but I'm sure you guys are pretty happy that your boys, your three Lions, coming out on top here in the 2026 World Cup. So with that in mind, guys, that is the end of the World Cup this time around. And uh, the World Cup, or I should say the Nations League, is going to be coming up next. The draw uh, has already happened. In fact, let's, uh, let's kick back out. The draw has, in fact, already happened for the Nations League group. And since our uh, Nations League Division B has been drawn, we are going to be taking on Denmark. And I'm sorry, Serbians, but we're taking on Albania. And I know the conflict between the two nations, so try and keep it civil in the comment box below. So yeah, Denmark and Albania will be our Nations League, which will be the next four matches that will be taken on. And then it's Euros qualifying after that. So now we can actually end this proper. I'd like to say thank you very much, guys, for watching this episode and watching the journey of the World Cup so far. Let's try and do it again. Let's try and do it again in four years' time and see what happens. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please go and drop it a like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And if you want to leave a comment below on what you saw today or the series as a whole, please go and do so. I appreciate every single comment that you guys put down. But anyway, guys, I've been Gendo, and you've been awesome, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and peace out.